Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah Khalees and in today's video I'll be showing you one way you can go about painting characters for your games. Even if your goal is to bring to life a 3D experience, knowing how to make concept art you can then use when modeling and texturing is a big plus. You can also use the techniques showcased in this video to paint bone based characters you'll then animate using Spine or even Unity like I did for one of my games, The Fire of of belief. With that said, let's paint a game character using Adobe Photoshop. Note that you can smoothly follow along using some other 2D application, GIMP for example. Keep in mind however that a drawing tablet will greatly help when creating 2D art. But if you don't have one, still stick around. Stuff discussed here can help for the future or even when painting on a traditional canvas or piece of paper. So obviously the first step is to sketch out your character, prop or environment. This is a crucial part of the process, so take your time coming up with a cool looking design. Note that all the detail and best painting in the world won't save a poorly drawn character or sketch. I recommend you come up with several characters and ideas before moving on to the painting part of the process. My first ideas, be it for a game jam or a design, are usually the worst, so flush them out your system the fastest possible. I usually take a simple hard round brush when sketching out my characters, keeping things simple and playing around with the design's proportions. Now of course drawing is a tough skill to master. I myself have so much to learn when it comes to creating vibrant worlds and epic looking characters, but by continuously practicing, for example doing lots of figure drawing, it's impossible that you don't acquire your own awesome style and artistic skill set. Once you have a satisfying look design, it's now time to sketch out the shadows. You must first of all define a light source that I usually represent with a little bulb or dot. You'll then draw out your shadows in the opposite direction of your light source. When making many assets for your game, try staying consistent with where the light source is coming from. For example, with the Fire of Belief, I painted all my characters from a top-down view, the light source coming from above. Alright, once the sketch complete, it's time to block in the main colors. So I'll create a new Photoshop layer and begin that process. At this point, I usually like to change my background to a dark grey color. It's more calming for the eyes and colors tend to pop out more. To block out colors, I take this simple brush with slightly transparent tips. You can get a similar looking brush by selecting your basic hard round one and then going into your brush settings which you can find right here and turning on transfer which will give your tip some nice transparency. I'll then loosely paint over my sketch. Once again, don't feel the need to settle for the first colors you pick. Test various color combinations and pick the one you feel goes best with the mood and feel of your game. At this point, don't pay any attention to shadows and light. Just block in those colors, turning off your sketch layer and cleaning things up if need be. Alright, we're making great progress. Here's when our asset starts really coming to life. I'll make a new layer and begin step 4, blocking in shadows and light. So based off our sketched out shadows, I'll take a darker shade of the character's color using the eyedropper tool, which you can actually Access here or by holding down I on your keyboard. And once you have that darker shade, begin painting. This is a great opportunity to actually right click on your layer and choose Add Clipping Mask. This way you can only paint on top of the stuff painted in the previous layer. But of course this is purely optional and I don't usually find the need for it. Also play around with your brush's size, increasing it to paint over larger parts of the design and obviously decreasing it for the smaller bits and bobs. Parts closest to the light source should also be lightened up. I'll then create a brand new layer and begin refining these blocky shadows. 
doing so can be quite time consuming, but the end result is definitely worth it. You'll basically have to go back and forth from brush to eyedropper tool, smoothing out the shadows and lighter parts of your design to get a smooth looking gradient. Shown schematically, I'll paint a vibrant red block and next to it a pinkish block. In my color panel, I'll then grab the color in between these two red shades. So my pink is somewhere here and my blood red right here. So I'll pick the color in the middle and paint a third block using that new red shade. Awesome. And then I'll repeat that process, for example, taking the color between my pink and my pinkish red and smoothing things out a little more using that newly selected color. Same between pinkish red and deep red. And you can go on and on until you're satisfied with how smooth things look. So you can apply that technique with a real character, grabbing the colour between your shady parts and quote-unquote neutral parts, and smoothing things out. Of course, this is much easier said than done, and you'll have to practice before nailing things right, but by applying these techniques and remaining patient, you'll end up with a smooth, textured looking character. Now here comes the final part of the process, adding the little details. This is a fun, exciting part that can really add an extra layer of life to your piece. For example, I often like adding little specular dots to my character's eyes to make them feel wet and juicy. So use this technique to get your characters feeling wet or humid. It's really easy peasy and makes things feel very satisfying. You can also grab a soft round brush and paint in a little shadow for the character to make him feel more integrated with the rest of the world. Using this same soft brush, you can add some interesting glowing effects to your character. Simply draw a soft contour around the assets and the effect is almost instant. If this is supposed to be concept art, I also like darkening up the sides of my canvas, which gives the design an extra bit of atmosphere and appeal. Also don't hesitate to paint in little particle effects or soft lights over your character to make things feel that much more interesting and alive. And that marks the end of this how to paint game characters tutorial. Now of course game art is an incredibly broad topic, so you can expect plenty more on the channel coming up in the near future. With that said, if you enjoyed the content and or found it helpful, it would be so appreciated if you could hit those like and subscribe buttons. Okay, thanks so much for watching, see you very soon, cheers!